Folks, go wild. Go crazy for Ford himself, Travis Willingham! All right. We know how she sneezes and we know she hates sleeves. Give it up for Marisha Ray! All right, give it up for Molly. That's right, it's Talisin Jaffe! This may take a little longer due to his recent paralyzation. So folks, give it up for Sam Regal! You know him, you love him. It's Caleb Liam O'Brien! Hide your sweets, cause here comes gesture. It's Laura Bailey! I was told she's this the was best a Starbucks? hype man ever. Dude, I seriously. Love she's not wow. awesome. So oh, welcome oh. to our morning talk show here on the, the new cast of The View. Uh, <laughs> Brought what? to you by Mutant Soda. Coming in flavors right? like red and... It really is. And ambiguous. You soda. <laughs> and cloudy <laughs> with <forget>. air bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> I like that it's Woo! Jester saying don't forget. Yeah. <laughs> Works out well. What do we do? <laughs> what do we do here, guys? <laughs> I, think this uh, uh, I guess first and foremost, uh, <laughs> who here watches Critical Role? <laughs> Raise your hand if you are really confused and have never seen anything involved with it. All right, we got a few people in the audience. You people good know friend, what to do. Good friend. Yes. We apologize in advance. You're going to be very confused. <laughs> um, but yeah, welcome. So we're a bunch of nerdy ass voice actors who play D and D. Uh, it began with our home game, and about three years ago we started streaming it, and it seems to continuously... Uh, we're really this, classy, y'all. what we're doing now? <laughs> Here comes Welcome the Welcome to my abode. Okay. <laughs> no, I like it this way. It's more casual. We're all just hanging out, guys. We're just regular people yeah. who don't know how to cross the... <laughs> <laughs> tuck and roll, tuck and roll. Go that's, limp. That's some, that's some dad acrobatics. That was, that was awesome. <laughs> we, we will tear a meniscus before this panel is over. <laughs> we will find a way to hurt ourselves. Uh, well, here, you guys mostly know stuff about us. So we won't bore you with talking about ourselves when you could ask us questions that make us all nervous. Um, so do you want to go straight into the Q&A and we can have a conversation? I think this is a good plan. So yes, we have, let's do it. We have uh, on both sides of the room, I believe, lines to ask questions. We'll be alternating. Folks, as they go, look for the individual holding the mic and get behind the line carefully. Respect Gentle. Respectfully. Peacefully. Peacefully. It's probably good right Whoa. there. It's probably You're a really huh. big up there. Now, when we get a question, an individual question for each of us to answer, you have to do a runway walk. Yeah, yeah. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm into it. What is that? 
That is how you power walk. I am not doing that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> which, sort, which side do we start on? I just said which chart. Your, which your choice, Travis. Yeah. Where do you want to start? Let's go with that side. Yay! Oh, yay. First, hi. Uh, my name is Carla. Blame Carla on Twitter. Hi, everybody. Oh, hi, Carla. Hi. Um, my question is for anybody who wants to answer it. Um, invariably, the narrative sort of dictates things about your character. What's the most interesting thing the narrative has given you? So what's the most interesting thing the narrative has given your character that you weren't initially anticipating? Craven Edge. <laughs> Pretty good narrative gift. It's a sword that talks and wants death. I didn't, I did, what is it, what thing happened out of our control that? What, 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 thing, what thing in the narrative informed something about your character you weren't anticipating that you liked? All questions for uh, Liam have to be in German, by the way. I'm sorry. <laughs> Eine Frage? Eine Frage? <laughs> Nein! Yeah, that, that's been unexpected. <laughs> wait, 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 the whole should, party we should, name. We should practice that right now. Nine! Nine! Nine. Nine. Oh, nice. That seems so weird. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> One entire country is just going, they just love to say no. <laughs> it's like, man, I'm really glad that Rammstein's making a comeback. It's great. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, not in this campaign, but uh, you presented me with Kaylee at some point in, in oh, yeah. the last campaign. That was pretty uh, unexpected and dirty. <laughs> <laughs> you tried to hate on your daughter. Can I just say how grateful I am that young Molly Mock in the front row has got earphone, earbuds on and is playing an iPad game. And Yay! <laughs> that is so on Molly character, I can't even begin care. to tell you. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Good question, thank you. Molly Mock's playing Dream Daddy, just zoned out. <laughs> oh yeah. Next question. Uh, pick up, um, uh, my name is Roberta, I'm pick up, uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, um, I'm from Kansas City, so thank you for coming to the Midwest so that I could not, you know, fly forever to get to where you guys are. Um, yeah. Uh, my question is, if you guys, as people or as your characters, were one of the Hogwarts house founders, oh. what would your house name be and what would the traits you would uh, like to be in your house be? Oh. Like, what what, what, what Hogwarts would our what would Hogwarts house? houses be in campaign two? No, uh, if you were a Hogwarts house founder, what... Oh. What would your house be about? Oh. Yeah, what would what your would house be about, and what would that house name be? Ooh. Ooh. Jeez, that is a complicated question. <laughs> wow. Is, is from, yeah. from Molly Mock, that's easy. What, would there be a house for dropouts, basically? <laughs> I think that would be... Uh... <laughs> J.K. Rowling took, like, 10 years to write that shit, so... <laughs> I'm, like, trying to find something on the spot. I've got one. Okay, oh, well, of course you do. My <laughs> Matt, 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 Matt. Runway. Here comes Matt Work, work, work it, work, work. <laughs> Get it, girl. Get it, girl. You're get up next, girl. Travis. Uh, mine would be ho House Easy Cry. And uh, we, basically, you just all sit around and watch movies that are really, really not meant to be emotionally impactful and see which one breaks into tears first. Good. That's a good house. <laughs> I think we'll go with that answer. I don't think everybody's going to top no. that. Nah, yeah, that's, that's good. That feels yeah, solid. No. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That means they're all apparently part of my house. But my, but my house animal would definitely be a bear. I know that much. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Next question. All right, guys. My name is Sarah. I'm here from Chicago. Hi, Sarah. Uh, Laura, I hope you liked those donuts yesterday. Oh. Wait, what? There the, were donuts oh, yesterday? Yes, you did, and they were so good, good, and I ate them. I did not share them. Hey, that's fine. I told you. <laughs> Hoard them or share them. And you them. just That's outed your... me. That's fine. Anyway, uh, my question is... <laughs> I saw the box. <laughs> yeah, I didn't see any donuts. I know. I mean, I we're not really them. surprised by that. I mean... That 50-foot woman ate all the donuts. 
So my question is, it's been a couple months now since the Critical Role Hamilton crossover soundtrack came out. What is your favorite track or tracks from that album? Oh, oh man. I like the Skull Debate that we had. That was really good. I listened to that several times. The Skull Debate was really pretty, pretty spectacular. The, the Percy Keyless Cabinet Debate was also pretty good. Oh, that good. was also really good. I like yeah, both, both the Cabinet, cabinet Debates yeah. were really awesome in that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. I'm just waiting for a Dear Evan Hansen <laughs> something. <laughs> uh, anytime Raishan was singing, oh, I was my happy. Gosh, yeah. yes. Yeah. So cool. I loved my Vex singer. She sounded amazing. Yeah, I'm Have a little biased. Her? Yeah, uh, she's oh. here. Nice. Uh huh. Is she in here? <laughs> nope. Dang. <laughs> Somebody say yes. We can talk about her while she doesn't know. <laughs> I'm I'm a personal fan of uh, Animus, the Percy song. The, like that whole era of Percy songs in there were just so such a perfect moment of Percival's own like self-loathing and trying to realize if he had purpose or he would fall to his own, you know, devices and, and failings and, and those songs encapsulated it perfectly with the perfect choices from the Hamilton soundtrack for them. And so yeah, I'm a big fan of those. I also really like the song where Pike was teaching Grog how to read. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, so <laughs> cute. Yeah. How crazy is it that you guys did that? <laughs> It was like 47 songs or something. It's the entire thing. It's crazy. I don't, oh, you guys wow. are nuts. Yeah, if, if, if you haven't ready. heard it, it's pretty spectacular. You should go on and like, you're like, oh, this yeah. is like a cute fan musical thing. No, no, it's really, it's really intense. Yeah. It's deep. It's very deep. Thank yeah, you. Thank Great you. question. Yeah. Go back over here. Um, hi, I'm Leah from Chicago. Hi, Leah. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Sorry, you I, got this. I, I stepped on him. Um, we were talking in line about our D and D characters, and we came up with a really good question that we would like to ask you about your characters. I guess from campaign two, what would your character's favorite brand name cereal be? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> ah. Do the walk. <laughs> <laughs> Oh! <laughs> uh, I would I like to there. copyright uh, Bash Berries for Grog cereal. Bash Berries. But what about for your second campaign? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, you know, I would say Captain, Captain, Crunch. Captain Crunch. Yeah, for you, yeah. <laughs> He's a seafaring man. Right? He was not a captain. <laughs> Whatever. I think the word you know, ranks you. You got it. You got he just it. wants him to get soggy. I, I think for both uh, Keyleth and Bo, it works uh, to just rebrand Golden Grams to Golden Gods. That's really good. Yeah. There's nothing I can think of that isn't a spoiler at this point. <laughs> <laughs> You'd just be Lucky Charms. I have one more week. Are you not Lucky Charms? I have one more week. I got one for lucky you. Lucky Charms is really good, actually. For, for Molly Mock, it could be Oops, all tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Uh, I don't know what I would For not? What's like a really stinky dirty cereal? <laughs> K Caleb O's. <laughs> Muselix. Yeah. Crackling oat bran. Yeah, like That's mine. <laughs> Muselix. <laughs> Muselix kind of works perfectly for Caleb. <laughs> just a cup of There's corn like, flakes. isn't there something that's just like, it's called like something sticks? What? For not? It's like a sticks. There's there are, a sticks? Yeah, there's I've little, seen it in the cereal like aisle, too. Sticks. Yeah, it's oh, like, yeah, black, it's like the most yeah. hated cereal in the world. <laughs> you see it, and you're like, you could build things with that. You're not going to eat it. I feel like Jester would just be like every sugary cereal. Cookie in a, crisp? like Cookie crisp. Cookie crisp with, like, Fruity Pebbles, oh. yeah. with, like, Fruit Loops, with Lucky Charms all mixed in a bowl together. Mm. Is this Jester or from this morning? <laughs> The question well, wasn't what you had for breakfast. <laughs> it's a thin membrane. Ooh, I, I ordered oatmeal that was like creme brulee oatmeal. Oh. oh. It was so sweet, though, you guys. Was it good? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Runway walk. Yeah. <laughs> good question. Oh, yes. Thank you.
threatened oh, for two. We're going over here? <laughs> Hi, uh, my name is Sean. I'm from here in Chicago. Hi, Sean. Uh, this question is actually for Matt. Um, Hi. There have been a lot of references in this new campaign uh, involving uh, the outer world, um, the moon and stars, so I was just curious, what is the cosmology of your world? Is it a uh, planet in a solar system, or is it disk world, or something in between? It's a flat Earth system, right? <laughs> it's in a snow globe. It's staying elsewhere. Flat Earth. Yeah, they're, they're, plan they're planning to shoot up a, a, a small orb to see if uh, Xander is ends at the edge. Um, no, uh, it, it's... It's a combination of the two, meaning uh, I'm, a, I'm a fan of astrophysics and, you know, uh, astronomy. So for me, it's, it's, I'm having to, to marry my love of that aspect of existence with the strange, obtuse, planar element of Dungeons and Dragons. So I'm kind of finding a merge between the two, where I do believe there is, you know, universe, planets, moons, and that kind of a larger scope, though that's not anything that's really going to play into this. But then we go into dimensional stuff, far realm elements, the actual different planes that overlap, those that don't. Um, so yeah, I'd say it's a blend of the two, if anything. <laughs> New goal travel. for campaign two, <laughs> space travel. <laughs> oh man, that'd be a hard left turn if we go into Spelljammer partway through this game. Flying in the sky wasn't enough for you. <laughs> yeah, enough with airships. We oh, want to go it. outer space. Oh man, that'd be the fastest TPK. <laughs> <laughs> this part, this is part way through the atmosphere. All right, I'm gonna make a constitution check. Um, yeah. <laughs> DC 40. Yeah. <laughs> Not rolls a natural 20. Everyone else dies. <laughs> Roll for free entry. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, I'm Robin. So you go to a lot of cons and get asked a lot of questions, I'm sure. So I was wondering. What's something that you're willing to talk about that you haven't been asked yet that you'd like to answer? Ooh. What's something you haven't been asked at a convention that you've been wanting to mention or talk about at a panel? Oh, <laughs> that is a really open question. Yeah. It's a question I can always think the answer, uh, the answer to about a week from now. I'm going to be like, oh, yeah, why does no one ever ask that? Here? It's just lights and blinding. I have no idea. Let's talk about cryptocurrency. OK, guys. <laughs> Let's, uh, let's just change this panel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. I already talked about tiny trains this weekend. What's your what favorite? What's your favorite ice cream flavor? I have been, and I'm such a fool for marketing. I've just been eating the the uh, Halo Top. Uh, uh, the, there's like Halo a, Top is so the good. pancake really good. flavor. Have you tried the waffles pancake and pancake really flavor? Good. It is. We have a friend who made a commercial for Halo Top, and ever since I've just been, it, that's what we've been oh, getting. Oh, no way! I didn't realize that was Halo Top that he did. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, the, yeah that was Mike Diva and that's Mandy. That's awesome. Like, was yeah. Oh, movie. my God. Yeah. <laughs> it was a she very asked. End the question. So we want to talk about it. Go watch it. Next question. <laughs> Chocolate chip cookies, no, by no the way. No one's asked, but, uh, but me and Liam have been sharing a hotel room this weekend. <laughs> I'm, I'm eager to share about that. Our wives are several states away. <laughs> Different time zone doesn't count. <laughs> nice I don't think it's going to get any better than that, so good question. Back over here. Hi, I'm Angela. I'm from Chicago. Um, I have a question for all of you. What's the weirdest personal experience that's influenced a personality trait for your characters, or Matt, in your case, a plot point? Oh, interesting. Oh, these are all... These are two difficult questions for uh, 11 o'clock in the morning. You're giving us too much credit. <laughs> um, being pregnant made me make Jester like pickles. That was a fully, like, pregnant clue. Uh, the hospital sequence was based on a, 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 a real shenanig teenage shenanigan, which began with the phrases, and can anyone here vomit on command if it's necessary? <laughs> like, with a little bit of prep, sure. <laughs> Long story. I would say uh, the, the first arc of the new campaign 
came after I had a, a, an offhand, in-depth conversation about how strangely wonderful and dark the film Something Wicked This Way Comes was when it came out. If you haven't seen that film, it's technically a Disney film, but it's really dark and deals with the carnival that blows into town and it gets weirder from there. Uh, Jonathan Price is in it and it's amazing, yeah. So that, that, the conversation with that kind of triggered my thought process on what I wanted to do my introduction for the new campaign. What happens in this campaign? The, the one you played. But what happens next? That was a good question. That was good. <laughs> well done. <laughs> All right, so we're up here now? Yep. All right. Hello, uh, I'm Jocelyn from Chicago. Hi, I was Jocelyn. Hello. I was wondering what your uh, favorite Studio Ghibli films were. Favorite what? Favorite, what? favorite, favorite, was... favorite Studio Ghibli films. Favorite Studio Ghibli films? Yeah. Oh. Porco Rosso. <laughs> Princess <laughs> Mononoke. 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 Yeah. Spirited Away. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, the Emoji Movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's underrated. It has all sorts of references. Spare him. To Spare him. <laughs> World War II. Oh my God. Uh, I I saw uh, Nausicaa Valley of the Wind at a very young age. And something about just the imagery of that film still, still sticks with me today, so that, that's probably mine. Over here. Cool. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, I'm Katie from Woodstock. Uh, Hello. My question is for Laura. By the way, Travis, Laura, congratulations. Thank Welcome you. to the New Parents Club. Um, Laura, you mentioned yesterday that for your character, Jester, you practice your voice by doing singing, and I was wondering, What's Jester's favorite song, and can we hear you sing some? Oh, no, that's terrible. Um, oh, God. Okay. I don't want to sing it, but um, my, my favorite one to sing in the car is Popular. <laughs> Because it's so, it's so great for Jester. Um. <laughs> spill it, girl, spill it. Wait, now I don't remember any words. It's too I'm popular. Too no, I know that. <laughs> I wanna be popular. Uh, okay, fine. Oh God. <laughs> Whenever I see someone less fortunate than I, and let's face it, who isn't less fortunate than I? My tender heart tends to start to bleed. <laughs> and when someone needs a makeover, that's you, Caleb, I simply have to take over. I know, I know. Exactly what they need. <laughs> You have to understand, you have to understand that before Critical Role on Thursdays, as we're getting ready to leave our house, the Pandora Broadway Musicals channel is on in her bathroom. So this should not be surprising. <laughs> what side yeah, are we yeah, on? Yeah. Uh, the, oh, we're up over here. We're on this one. I can't remember. Hi, I'm Richard from Ohio. Hey, Richard. And um, I want to say a shout out to my buddy Macaulay. And my, my question is for Sam. What phrases do you, or things do you like doing more either with shitting the bed or Burt Reynolds? Do I prefer shitting the bed or Burt Reynolds? Pre pretending to be a mustached action hero from the 80s or defecating in people's beds? <laughs> yes. Hmm. What a legacy you've left yeah. behind. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's rich, rich <laughs> career. <laughs> Very binary choice here, Sam. This is the rest of your Ch life. Change the world and leave it in a better place than you found it. <laughs> oh, boy. Hashtag role model. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> what have I done, guys? <laughs> oh, God. I could have created art. 
or music or theater, but I've, I've ruined my family name. <laughs> You're the voice of so many amazing brands. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> my children will, will be shamed of me someday. <laughs> Your tombstone, Sam Regal. He shat on many beds. Um, you are our Spuds McKenzie. <laughs> I, uh, I, I, you know, pooping in beds, uh, while amazing, has led to so many gifts of fake poo uh, from, from critters that uh, I prefer the gifts of fake mustaches, which I've also gotten a lot of, because uh, those I can give to my son and pretend that he's an old man. <laughs> Uh, yes, uh, but both are horribly embarrassing, and I apologize. Oh, but what's not embarrassing is my collection of fine T-shirts. <laughs> Hello, I'm Matthew Mercer. <laughs> How do you do to do this? <laughs> yes. How you do this? <laughs> oh God. Oh. Sam Regal, keeping me humble since 2014. <laughs> we are so blessed. <laughs> oh, I oh love who's behind that. us? We're over here. Uh, it's so weird looking on the screen. Amazing. <clears throat> Thank God that boy is playing that iPad game. He is intent on that iPad game. Earmuff. Oh no, he saw it. Earmuff. <laughs> Next question over here. Oh God, oh God. Uh, hey guys, I'm AJ, I'm from Atlanta. Hey. And ironically, this question is for Matt. Um, you have such a way with your words to put any listener or viewer in the adventure with all you guys. And I can <laughs> Thank you for that. Uh, and my question is, what advice do you have to potential DMs uh, on grasping that ability that you have? Uh, reading helps. <laughs> Sorry, that came across really condescending. I didn't mean it that way. No, I mean, like, like honestly, re <laughs> damn it. Reading a lot of books, you get a really good idea of how uh, writers set scenes, how they describe atmosphere when a character enters a new scene. And that's the kind of same kind of narrative structure you want to lend to your players when they enter a new scene in the game, in the campaign as well. Um, so thinking and even making notes if you want to, that whenever they go to a new area, like I used to have long ago before I got more comfortable with it, a little list on my the back of my Dungeon Master screen that said smells, sights, light, texture, temperature, you know, things that I can hit a few of those bullet pointed as soon as they enter a new scene, and that already kind of draws them in to the sequence. Their, their imaginations are already kind of sparked at that point. So that's a really good thing. Another, expand your vocabulary. Um, as reading books, once again, helps with that as well. If there's a word you don't understand, you get to look it up and be like, oh, now I know that word. Or conversely, if you're a real nerd like me, just sometimes go to like thesaurus.com or <laughs> dictionary.com and learn new words, because that's cool, damn it. Thank you. Or you can make up a word like sigil. You know what? Look, you, you kids have it much better today because now you have a little button you could press so that says the word for you. We didn't have that growing up. You, you had kids. to assume how it was pronounced based on the spelling. You just you kids the audience. <laughs> you kids. Yeah. If you weren't a kid, you know I wasn't talking to you. 
She just said, she just, she just said, ask Siri. <laughs> See? No. You got this. <laughs> the world is your oyster. Thank you very question. much. Next question. Hi, it's Hannah from the Quad Cities. I'm the one who gave you guys the poster yesterday. Oh, yeah. Hi, good to see Hi. you. Um, I'm asking a question for you, Travis, from my friend Sabine, who had to leave yesterday, and for her friend Trish the Dish, who couldn't get um, you guys at another convention. Trish the Dish, my mom's name. Woo. Yeah, she wanted to know uh, what two people or characters would you or Grog want to arm wrestle with? What two people or characters would Grog want to arm wrestle with? Or you. Or you. Or me. Well, Grog is, that's a much better fight. Me, not so much. <laughs> uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson would be one. <laughs> um, and Schwarzenegger. Yeah! I want like Predator, Predator Schwarzenegger. Yeah. Uh, the atomic handshake arm wrestle. That's, that would be, that would be lovely. Good answer. Good, good answer. <laughs> Thank you. All right, over here. Hey, I'm Ian from Chicago. Uh, Hi, Ian. Uh, my question for you is, or for Matt, is um, as an aspiring DM, you're basically an inspiration for a lot of people. So what is your preparation for each session? How do you prepare? Uh, it ranges. Uh, it's a lot easier for home games. <laughs> when you're streaming it, your world building has to be very thorough, because a lot of people are going to be combing through it and finding plot holes or trying to see, well, well that doesn't make any sense. And I'm like, damn it. Um, so for me, my, my world building takes about half my prep time every week. It's about just trying to lay the tracks ahead of the train, if you will. Um, but for me, it's, it's depending on, if, if, if they're in a city, it's a lot more prep because it's a lot more kind of open form if you're on, a, on a, a path. For me, it's figuring out what would be some interesting encounters that they can come across that challenges their skills, challenges their abilities. It doesn't hurt especially to tailor some abilities to specific classes so characters have a moment to shine if they know how to step into that space. Um, or they forget they have Mage Hand. That happens sometimes too. Um. <laughs> oh my god. Could you imagine if, if not could force choke with that? Oh no. <laughs> what have we done? Um, but yeah, so thinking of interesting challenges, um, not just monsters. A monster is fun to fight, but sometimes it's cool to come up with terrain and possibly things in the terrain that are dangerous that could be used against or for the players in the battle. Um, so for me, I think of interesting type of encounters, think then narrative moments that those can fit into, and if they don't fit into the current narrative, I'll keep the notes for later. Um, but, I mean, it's a broad subject for a quick question. <laughs> uh, but if you check out the DM Tips online, hopefully those will help out. Matt Colville has some great videos as well. If you haven't checked them out, they could help out from there. Um, but focus on finding fun moments for your players that you can fit into the story is really kind of the key point. Hope that helps. Thank you. That was That's a good answer, Matthew. I try. <laughs> it would have been a long, a long question to answer. There's a small child over here. Um, Got a little one. Hi, my name is Zane, and I'm from Milton, and my question is, how fun is it to play Dungeons and & Dragons and stream it? How fun is it? It's so fun. It's really fun. The, funnest. the best. Yeah. It may be the most fun I've ever had. Pretty uh, fun. And Talison's had some fun. Yeah. <laughs> that speaks volumes. This fun is way easier on my knees these days, I'll tell you. <laughs> wow, that came out so wrong, too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. Do the runway. Do the runway. Yeah. <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I deserve that. <laughs> it's, fun, it's fun to play the game, but I, for, it, it's fun to hang out with you guys most of all. Yeah, we have a job that forces us to do our favorite thing on a weekly basis. Yeah. yeah. I hate you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we know, uh, should, we should have mentioned that caveat that Travis yeah. doesn't like any of us, but outside of Travis, yeah. yeah. Is this panel over yet? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to do shopping now for 20 minutes. <laughs> uh, thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. Over here. 
Hey folks, um, I'm Elliot, I live in Chicago. Uh, Lauren Travis, congratulations on impending parenthood. Thank you. Um, my wife and I are actually due a few months after you. Woo! So my question Congratulations! Is, thanks. So is I'm, Cardi B. <laughs> <laughs> Cardi B and I are like so close, so I'm aware of that. Um, oh, cool. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But actually my question is for Liam. Um, I was wondering if you have any recommendations for introducing your kids to D&D &D and gaming. Uh, I started DMing after Critical Role, uh, just completely took me by storm, and, but I have players who are much older, so any tips would be welcome. I'm so sorry, I only got about 5% of that. With kids? Yeah, I'm gonna be a dad, and I want to introduce my kid eventually to D&D, &D, and I know you DM for your kids, so any recommendations would be great. Wait till they're sure. three months old. Right. If I may, if I may, thank no, you get for asking. Up, buddy. Thank you for asking Liam a question. The runway is waiting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> that multimedia <laughs> back pocket. Oh, that's even weirder with the skirt. <laughs> Oh God! <laughs> That's what their hotel room the looked shirt. like. You managed you should to have defile the me. And and anyway, back yeah, to look children. At, look at back to children. <laughs> I I weirdly felt that from here. <laughs> yeah, it's a cantrip. <laughs> Some Dorian Gray shit going on. Area of effect. <laughs> Worst Magic Mike sequel. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, read a lot, read a lot of fantasy kids books to them. Uh, I really love the board game Dungeon, which is great for younger kids, but it has a lot of the basics of D&D baked into it, and that'll prep them, and then just help them make the character. I mean, there's no like real secret to it. Sand it down, don't terrify them, don't kill them right away. Uh, it took a year for me to scare my, my son with, with his character dying. Uh, which he loved when it happened. Um, just his friend. Yeah. Um, that's it. I mean, like, there isn't any special, you know, they're not going to remember everything and just don't care about them memorizing the rules. That's good advice for the internet as well. Uh, at its core, it's just about make-believe and having fun and, get, and letting your players make the choices. So that's easy to do. I thought this was kind of cool from Patrick Rothfuss, who was playing with his son as well, if you remember. He, uh, he made encounters that were puzzle-based encounters as opposed to just killing something encounters for very young kids. So as opposed to giving them a sword or a dagger, give them a magical rope that can tie itself. And then a series of encounters that they can use creative thinking outside of the box as a way of getting to the next part of the adventure without having to just kill what's in front of them, which I think was a cool method of very young kids you know, incorporating the idea of problem solving in the game. Do you remember when Matt gave us the, the puzzle at home before the stream? <laughs> he gave us like the Tangram puzzle that we had to solve and we took so freaking long. Yeah, I learned at that point, maybe out. not all puzzles work with certain groups. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think they're just fourth graders that are way smarter than us. Can you if you did something like that on the stream and, and everyone would see, I mean, more than usual, how stupid we are? <laughs> it's funny there were like how one seven, of those puzzle seven pieces to that puzzle. It was like seven really big square blocks, and the four of us took 45 minutes. I, just, I don't know if you're helping Yeah, we pace. basically <laughs> have that puzzle for my kids, and my son just looks at it and goes, plink, 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 plink. Like well, I said, your son's a genius. Certain groups. <laughs> so. He's going to take us to Mars, though. That's okay. It's fine. <laughs> Next Thank you. Over oh, here. Uh, for Sam and Travis, uh, Sam, how have you had to adapt from moving from the face of the party with Scanlan to the five charisma, is it, for not? Yeah. And then for Travis, how have you had to adapt to becoming sort of the presumed face of the party with Fjord having the highest charisma? Fjord. Hmm. <laughs> Ford. <laughs> uh, uh, it's tough. I'm, I am the babysitter. Ford tough? It's crazy. <laughs> We're going to make that a thing, aren't we? Yeah, it's, uh, uh, I, I used to look forward to, to Thursdays because I could just turn off my uh, intelligent adult brain and just go total applesauce moron for four hours, which was great. Um, it comes with a lot of responsibility. Like I look at Marisha's notes and they're really like, 
succinct and organized and there's like colored pens and all this stuff and mine is just like oh god oh god names locations that's wrong i'm getting all of matt's store names wrong i'm just committing to it because i just i just can't i can't do it right um but it's 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 nice because whatever uh any sort of strategy that i have i can just uh jump into it because the character's more it's built more for that so that's good yeah from my perspective it's it's uh uh, being a naturally, amazingly charismatic person in real life, it's, it's, a, it's a real big stretch to, like, just squash that down. Just, just don't be charming right now. Uh, it's a real challenge as a performer. Uh, and I'm getting better at it, but it's going to take some time. <laughs> Thank you. Over here. Hi, my name's Mariah. I'm from Reno, Nevada. Oh, yeah. Hi. So my question is kind of complicated, but um, what would a interaction slash first impression between your campaign one characters and your campaign two characters be? And for Matt, what would it be between like Gilmore and uh, Pamat? What was the last couple words? The last two? Oh, like, and for you, Matt, like our favorite like store merchants, what would it look like if they were to like come up and be like, oh, oh like, like Gilmore and Pamat? Oh, uh, I think I think um, Ford would say, "Well, that's a that's a pretty big boy right there," and I think Grog would say, "He's pretty." I I feel like uh, Bo would just do her classic. What's your deal <laughs> with Keyleth? Oh. oh. <laughs> There's a child. Yeah, y'all didn't know I could drop it like it's hot, did you? Somebody had coffee this morning. That was that's amazing. My, that's my wife, night. ladies and gentlemen. Somebody's been having some mutant backstage. Wow, that was amazing. So, so one other thing, I'm actually the bumbling idiot that brought you guys those tacky dragon bowling shirts. The oh, dragon bowling shirts, yes. Yeah. Oh, I grew that up, was like, great. How did I, that picture turn out? Uh, oh. Pretty good, actually. That's awesome. Uh, Keyleth and uh, did oh, Keyleth yeah. have anything to say to Bo? Yeah, What's your deal? That's it. They both said that to each other? Oh, I mean, Keyleth would say something overly complicated and too nice, and then Bo would just be over it. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> We went over this a little yesterday. But I, I literally don't even think he would have a word to just, no, just no, no. I don't think so. Yeah, Scanlon would just run around trying to kill Knot, uh, and Knot would try to run away, and that's pretty much it. So listen, I think that we should go up, uh, sneak in the backside, but keep a low profile. <laughs> <laughs> I think Jester would see Vex and run up and try to hug her, and Vex would just hold her hand out. <laughs> hand on head. No, darling. No. I think Gilmore would be, four of you. My goodness. That's <laughs> <laughs> right, I bet that makes it a lot cheaper on the, uh, on the overhead of running the actual store. Are you looking for a job, perhaps? <laughs> Oh, you made it businessy. I, I appreciate it. Respectfully, I have my own establishment. <laughs> but you're welcome to come by and see if you got something for trade. I thought it was going in a completely different direction. So did everybody else. Thank you. I'm, there's Over only there. so much I can fuel the community, okay? I have to be careful with my word choices. Uh, Next question. My name is Logan from St. Louis. Uh, and I wanted to ask, back from the first campaign, was it Clarota's original intention to betray Vox Machina, or did the Mind Flayers have some sort of effect on that? So for, for Clarota, I, it was a very, very small chance they could have maintained Cl Clarota to their side, because inherently, as a Mind Flayer, as an Illithid, does not care about people. And the working with the team was only purely out of self-preservation. So I was keeping track of the interactions with Colorado 
uh, seeing if they were able to work hard enough to try and like really empathize with this creature and being outcast and shunned, and in the final moments made like a final plea and with a high enough persuasion role, they might have given enough pause to where the Illithids would have turned against Clarota and then would have probably joined their side. That didn't come to pass. <laughs> but that's also kind of the fun nature of D&D. You know, you prepare these possibilities and get excited about which one might come to fruition. Still made for an epic end to a, to a betrayal, but yeah. Oh my gosh, what if we would have, what if we would have persuaded Clarota and then he would have been a friend of ours the whole rest of the campaign? Then you would have spent the whole campaign trying to somehow keep anyone from knowing that you have a mind flayer with you. <laughs> he turns into that friend. He just follows us everywhere and we're like, now how do we get him out of the party? Ah. Hey. <laughs> uh, I... I wish we would have had him. <laughs> yeah, we could have true polymorphed him or something. Eventually. <laughs> Eventually. <laughs> just wait two years, Clarota. I'll get this spell. We could have yeah. just put like a Santa Claus beard over all that stuff. <laughs> a strangely shifting Santa Claus beard. <laughs> he needed to die. <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh, yeah. uh, I'm Brenda from Illinois. I'm normal Illinois. Uh, my question is... First off, amazing trinket with bows costume. <laughs> How can you see that? True sight. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering what's the favorite, your favorite thing that your character's ever done, like a spell you used in like a uni unique way or whatever. Favorite or thing your character's ever done. Campaign one or two. The the uh, the cannonball uh, contest was pretty pretty <laughs> awesome. That was that was really fun. Feeble minding Rashan probably. <coughs> Winning the hearts of America. <laughs> You're such a dick. <laughs> Teleporting into a dragon. Oh yeah. Yeah, that was pretty good. Yeah, kill shot on kill shot on Kevdak. Yeah. yeah. Mine feeds on that. I think Grog in the Pokeball was Pokeball was one of my favorites. Uh, that was yeah. crazy. Yeah. I enjoyed doing the the tra la 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 la. Tra la 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 la. It just can't be touched. That was absurd. I'm gonna miss you, spellcasting bard. I know. I still kind of regret in our battle royale where Tarion did the, the hamster ball and that we didn't just all wait 10 rounds. Sure. To sure. We joked about it. You I hold my about. turn. I hold my turn. I hold, I hold my, my turn. turn. I hold my turn. I hold my turn. I hold my turn. Just around. It would have been so easily killed. Just staring down. <laughs> Dang, why didn't we do that? That would have been great. I know, I know. You guys can't do this. Yes, we can. <laughs> Good question, thank you. I'll regret a lot of things. Uh, hi, I'm, I'm Mick, and I live in Chicago. And okay. before I want to ask, uh, I ask my question, I just have one uh, message to send to uh, Liam O'Brien from my sister Shem over there. Raise your hand. Uh, and she was, she a uh, uh, German major, and she loves speaking German, and she just wants to say that she really appreciates Caleb speaking German. So, yeah, that. Oh, yeah. Now, on to the question. Oh, uh, okay, yeah, okay. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> sorry, guys, it's a little hard to hear for oh, us. Oh, sorry. Oh, so yeah, she just appreciates that Caleb speaking German. Because yeah, okay, she's... danke. Yeah, that's good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. So um, I would just like to ask, uh, since I've joined my first campaign this year, so I'm a D&D noob, uh, I started as a, bar a bard, and I would just like to ask, uh, is there any some kind of bard's guide to survival for dummies from you guys? <laughs> Bard's Guide to Survival? Is that what Be best mean? friends with a giant. <laughs> yeah. That helps. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, choose some healing spells and uh, stay away from the fight. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, I guess I didn't... I, I lived. <laughs> That's pretty crazy. Yeah. Well, you did that. You stayed away from the fight. Yeah. And you chose some healing spells. Yeah. Yeah. And you find you rode that fine line between annoying and endearing, <laughs> which I think is a very important thing for a bard. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Are we talking Sam or Scanlan right now? <laughs> good. Good point. Yes. Hi. 
Um, my name is Sarah. I'm actually way up from Wisconsin. Uh, real quick, I just want to say, Laura, my friend Gaston, actually crocheted you a nice little dice bag. Oh, it's nice really? and pink. I'm hoping this can get to you at some point before I leave. Um, yes, totally. But my question, because I know this will inspire her to do some fan fiction. Modern AU, what jobs would each of your characters have? Oh, Ooh. Cool. What job in the modern world would each of your characters have? Yeah, our new characters. Bo would be a postal worker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, straight up. Yeah. Disgruntled. <laughs> <laughs> but like the one you always see videos of online that like yeah, chucks the package from 15 package. feet away. Punting people's Amazon yep. orders. Yeah. I guess Ford would work for the CIA. I mean, he just changes his face all the time. Yeah. yeah. Molly would be teaching fire spinning on Venice, Venice Beach, basically. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes. Oh God, yeah. yes. Caleb would either work for DARPA or perhaps be like Christian Bale in the movie Moneyball. He would be barefoot in the office looking at a thousand numbers and figuring out how to work the stock market. Uh, Taylor, so she could have buttons? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, maybe I would work in like a candy store or something. Yeah. Or just like not work and like freeload <laughs> off of her mom. <laughs> um, Trust fund, baby. <laughs> would it be all right if I came up to give this to Laura? Yeah. Uh, oh, Jamie's Jamie go right ahead. here Jamie will help you out. Thank you so much. That's awesome. You look awesome, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> Over here. Uh, hi, I'm Eric from Indiana. Hi, and I'm a teacher at a middle school, and I run a campaign for uh, some of the kids, but That's it can awesome. get pretty chaotic because there's between 9 and 14 kids that like to show up. Whoa. Like, what the last session I DM'd, there was a kid that had to leave his phone on, and his text tone was the Seinfeld ditty, and it kept interjecting, including at the, like, the climactic moment, so it was like the spell scroll takes effect, and... <laughs> <laughs> so... So my question is, one, Matt, do you have any advice for wrangling excessive amounts of players? And two, has anything ever worked out where not so much that you intended, but because it happened just so perfectly, kind of like that Seinfeld moment? <laughs> oh, uh, well, for one, wrangling players is part of the challenge of DMing, especially on that size. Um, one is if anybody else is ever interested in DMing in that group or someone else you know, you could always split into two separate groups to make it manageable for both of you. If not, you really have to ask the players to be present and you know, kind of respect the time you're putting into the game. And you know, especially if you're younger, it can be kind of hard. But be like, guys, up front, either take the phones at the beginning of the game and give them back when it's done type of a scenario works out well. Um, and if you have a, a way of rewarding them for being vigilant in that, that also helps, you know, dangle the carrot, if you will. Um, and simplifying the rules a bit. As opposed to having them roll damage for every attack, you can have like a set damage number. You know, as opposed to rolling a D6 for a short sword, they just do four damage, plus whatever the modifier is. That way, all they're doing is rolling for attack to see if they hit or miss. With spells as well, if you set numbers for different abilities, it takes up less time on a combat round. Um, and, I mean, yeah, there, there's a lot of, actually there's some really good videos online for how to deal with larger group sizes and how to kind of minimize the work you have to put into a, to keeping the game going. So go ahead and do some research on YouTube as well. There's some good stuff on there that can go a lot better than I can in my short time for the question and answer. But hopefully those few tips will help push you in that direction. Cattle Thank prods Thank are good. Cattle prods are great. Oh yeah. There, uh, there are a May lot get in of... trouble for that one, but middle school. <laughs> yeah. eh. <I> <laughs> Uh, kind of going off of what Liam said earlier, though, there are a lot of other kind of simpler role-playing games that if you have, like, a batch of brand-new kids that have never touched anything before, just to get them into the mood of role-playing and making choices that have consequences, there are a lot of simpler games, um, like the, the Dread System, for example, or even Honey Heist, yeah, that we played. It's D6, and that's all it is. Um, or even... Um, we're running it on Geek and Sundry right now, uh, the Weave Society, the Weave game, because it's just, there's no mechanics. They, you can like pre-generate a character and they just, it gets them in the flow of, of role playing before you start throwing a bunch of math and modifiers at it. Not that you asked me, but. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody, thank you. 
Awesome, bud. This is the last question for the panel. Uh, we're sorry, everyone. Boom, ba -doom, boom, boom, Hi, boom, I'm Maggie. Boom. I'm from St. Louis. I'm Miss Sunflower 94 online. Um, my question is for all of the players. Um, I saw on Thursday Liam posted a YouTube video for a song that reminded him of Caleb, and I wanted to know if there was, um, if you guys have started either officially or personally playlists for your new characters, and if we could please know at least one song that you have. <laughs> Playlist songs, wow. Yeah. yeah, I think we're all pretty obsessed with music I'm like when 80, we're characters. I'm like 80 tracks in on mine really? right now. Really? <laughs> yeah. I know I'm Liam not. has a lot too. I got about 20 songs and I'm listening to it to figure out which ones to pull out. And also, it's too soon, probably. I feel like I'll, yeah. uh, we have to, all of us, reveal a little bit more before we can yeah. launch. Yeah, and like reveal some of our backstory before that. So yeah, pick, another 10 or 12. Do you, have, like. do you have a song each that you think you can reveal about your character? I, nope. I could do, uh, uh, I will follow him, <laughs> follow him wherever he may go. <laughs> um, I am choosing, so there's a singer named Lenka who um, is just perfect for Jester. Um, so, like, her whole album, I'm like, oh, I don't know which one to pick. Um, but probably uh, listen to Trouble as a Friend by Lenka. That's one of Jester's tops. Uh, which one? I have a few. Um, eh? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have, um, going off of what Liam tweeted the other day, I also have a K-Flay song Whoa. on my... Oh, what is that? <laughs> I also have a like, uh. gameplay song on my playlist, which is Blood in the Cut. Yeah. Uh, oh, God, that's so anyone. perfect. Yeah. That's yeah. straight up Beauregard, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, uh, he's looking. I'm, I'm debating between giving a one that might be slightly spoilery for... for Don't, do Don't do it. Don't do it. Yeah. Just go for it. Who cares? Uh, I'll say uh, just for fun, just because. Actually, this one's pretty funny. I have a joke one that I'll give, which is Liam Lynch's "I'm All Bloody Inside" is pretty, pretty, <laughs> which is a ridiculous <laughs> song that I'm a big fan of. That's so, fun. Yeah. Oh man, I think our time is up. Oh no, I think that's it. Oh, it is. Oh yeah. guys, look, it's at zero up. now. We don't have any more time. That's unfortunate. We, we love, love you. you guys. Thank you guys. guys. Thank you guys so much. Hand hearts. We have a, we have a live stage panel, and we'll be at the tables the rest of the time. So please come out and see us. Yeah, have a great time. Out. We love, love you guys. guys. Have a great week. And to quote RuPaul, let the music.